for me to understand what's going on. It's 9.35 here in Toronto. Welcome back to a Breakfast with Brian Bill. This part of the show brought to you by Pure Genius Waters, the genius away to quench your thirst. You know, folks, one of the great things uh, that I get to do uh, hosting a morning show and broadcasting all these years uh, it is, you know, you, you meet all kinds of different guys in the business uh, while they're playing. It's not as always as easy to get a hold of them as it is when they retire, but obviously they have more time on their hands. But you get to meet some uh, really great people, and I'm de- delighted to bring on board now one of those guys. Uh, for, you'll know him for most of his career with the New Jersey Devils. His name is Jay Pandalfo, and yesterday he announced his uh, retirement. Good morning, Jay. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. Oh, Jay, it's Brian Angus here. I, thank you very much for coming on. And look, maybe for the first time in all these years, you don't have any note from anyone on the team saying, be at the rink at 10 o'clock for uh, the skate, and then you're going to do some dry land training, and uh, then we're going to have a couple of uh, film sessions. That's all gone. That's, that's all gone. That's, that's maybe been the hardest part for me, is uh, <laughs> having that, not having that routine. You used to getting up in the morning and, you know, having a schedule and knowing exactly what you're going to do that day. And now uh, I have plenty of time in my hands, but I have two young kids at home, so now my wife has a schedule for me every day. Well, I understand all of that, but uh, the question I, I often feel obliged to ask in these situations, and because it's been so as much a part of your life, uh, I mean, when, it, when the time came, were you ready for it, or was it something that was really hard for you? I, I was ready for it. I think... Um, I thought last year it was almost a bonus to be able to be a uh, part of the Bruins um, with the lockout and everything. I wasn't sure I was gonna, you know, be able to find work really, and then it ended up working out great. Being from Boston and getting a chance to, you know, finish my career with the Bruins, um, I kind of knew last year that was probably gonna be it. So I, I was ready, I was prepared. Um, saying that, it's still, it's still difficult, you know, doing something for as long as they did um, and being such a part of your life. It's, it's definitely tough to stop, but uh, I was definitely prepared and ready for it. I mean, you've got all kinds of accolades here, and I'll list some of them for a second, but how could you possibly have played 13 years in two Stanley Cups with the Devils then walked across the town to the hated rivals, the New York Islanders? I mean, how could you possibly do that, Jay? I know, it wasn't. <laughs> but at the time, you know, you, you know, you wanted to, I wanted to continue my career. And, I know. Uh, the Islanders were great to give me an opportunity, and I, I enjoyed my uh, one year there. Uh, they're obviously a organization that's up and coming um they get back to the playoffs last year i know they struggled a little bit this year but you know, they have uh, with john Tavares leading the leading the charge that they're going to be a good team for a long time well, they sure are there's a lot i want to get to here with you jay tell me this I, I mean you are a native of burlington mass and you talked about you know being from the boston area now, a lot of american guys don't get into hockey we know boston's a hot uh, hotbed for hockey and that as well but basketball and football becomes usually before that how did it become hockey for you well, I started skating at a young age. I think especially being from Boston, this area, um, you know, most kids try skating. Uh, my dad didn't play hockey, but my uh, grandfather did. He was he played in college. And back then, most American player, players, that was, um, you know, as far as they got. And he was a pretty good college player at Northeastern. And I think just from that, you know, having some of my family play, that's, that's how I started. And I remember, you know, right from the start, the you know, first time I skated, that I loved it. You know, once, once, it's, once it's in you, it never leaves. Yeah, you know, one of the things that sticks out for me, obviously, two Stanley Cups, and <clears throat> people will know that in 2000 and 2003 uh, with the Devils, obviously a, a dream come true for, for most everybody. But I think one of the most warming things that anyone who looks back over your career is the fact that your very own teammates, your peer group, the guys that really meant the most to you as far as your work side of things are concerned, voted you the unsung hero in five of the 13 seasons with that team and also the players player three straight seasons i mean that's when you look back on it now i know that that uh, means a hell of a lot to you jay yeah there's no questions uh you know anytime your teammates recognize you in that way it mean it means a lot um you know those are the guys that are with you every day and they see uh, how you prepare how you work and uh that really meant a lot to me and you know, i had some great teammates in new jersey um we obviously had some successful teams and you know that's part of my life I'll never forget and really enjoyed. I was fortunate to be part of such good teams and play with some unbelievable players. Um, you know, obviously plenty of Hall of Famers with, I mean, Marty is going to be one and then, yeah. you know, getting the chance to play with, you know, Scott Niedermeyer, Scott Stevens, Scott Gomez. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. And Pat Burns. Pat Burns was, um, he was my favorite coach I ever had. 
Um, Late great Pat Burns. Uh, it was, it, he was unbelievable. He uh, he knew how to get guys going. I'll tell you that. And he he was he was an unbelievable coach and an unbelievable guy. But he wasn't always the easiest guy to get along with no. when he was coaching. But he uh, he was great. He, he got the most out of everyone. He didn't suffer fools lightly. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, the thing about Pat. <clears throat> and Pat worked with me uh, at the fan for so many years. We became very close friends. And I went with him when the lease actually fired him back out to the townships where, you know, he loved. Uh, I mean, but the thing about Pat was he used to, he just couldn't stand prima donnas as one of the many things. He'd say, look, I worked as a cop for all those years and it got my feet firmly on the ground. You know, you tell me you can't come in here and give me an hour and a half in the morning to practice when we were working 12 hour shifts, putting our life on the line. It was kind of hard to argue with that, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. He, he put stuff into perspective pretty quickly yeah. for everyone, no matter who you were, you know, and what your role was on the team. He he treated everyone pretty much the same way, and uh, he had to respect him for that. And I think all the guys, you know, respected him, and that's why he got so much out of everyone. Jay, you represented the states at the '94 <clears throat> Junior Championships, which you know how big that is here <clears throat> in Canada. Excuse me, and the '99 uh, World Championships. I have to talk to you a little bit about Sochi, obviously, just about. Oh, gosh, four weeks away. Not even. The NHL wraps up uh, on Saturday night, the 8th, and then the, the, the lads are all going over there. I had a woman on called Dr. Ann Speckert, who's a leading, leading expert on the Chesnian terrorist, Jay. And, uh, and when she starts to spell out to you the history of what's gone on with Chechnya between them and Russia, I mean, it is scary, and she's guaranteeing there's going to be some kind of activity. It might not be in the games, but certainly stuff's going to happen around them because they are never going to let this chance pass to let the world know how mistreated they feel they've been by Russia. You know the guys well. You've talked to them all uh, going over there this year. What's sort of the uh, you know finger on the pulse feeling from guys you've talked to? Yeah, I think it's you know definitely it's something in the back of their mind. Um, I don't think they're going to, you know, they're going to do everything they can to keep, uh, obviously, everyone safe over there. But, you know, if they feel like there's something, you know, they're really worried about and concerned that something could really happen with inside the uh, a village or at some of the games, they're going to, you know, maybe pull them out of there. But hopefully that's not going to happen. I think they're trying to be reassured that they're going to keep them as safe as possible. But, you know, you hear all these things. These guys, <clears throat> it's in the back of their mind. Well, it, uh, you know, playing a hockey game, is absolutely, I don't mean this in any way disrespectful, Jay, but playing a hockey game is is like a fun thing to do compared to what the atrocities they, that's gone on there and the tribal warfare that's going on. And one of the things that really scares me, and I'll get off of this topic because we all hope it's going to go well, I know that, but when <clears throat> people over there don't care whether they lose their life or not, more importantly, they think it's an honor if they do, when you're dealing with people like that, it's really tough to get any rationale when it comes to dealing with them, and that's part of what they're dealing with. So that's what she pointed out, and that's what really kind of scares me about it. Tell me this. Are you a fan of the NHL being involved in the Olympic Games? There's a break here. Some teams are happy there's a break. Other teams who are playing really well would like things to keep going. I know you've represented your country a couple of times. Are you a fan of the NHL and the Olympics? I am. I think it's... Uh... <laughs> I think it's a, you know an honor to be able to represent your country, and these guys take a lot of pride in that. Um, I think it would be nice if uh, obviously it's not going to happen, but if the Olympics could be held over in North America every year, I think for the <laughs> NHL that would make a lot more sense. But you're not going to be able to you know have that happen. So um, you know, these guys still want to have a chance to represent the country, and I think it's uh, it's worth it, and it's it's great exposure for hockey. Um, as you saw in 2010, that was incredible hockey and great for, you know, the Olympic Games. What do you think about the future of the team you played most of your career with there in New Jersey? Uh, you know, we've uh, you, you look at all the teams, you look at all the big events that are going on in New York this week with the Super Bowl coming down there. Uh, how do you see the future of the Jersey team? Do you think it's solid? Do you think it's safe? Yeah, I think it's solid. And safe. I mean, it's a little bit of the changing of the guard. I mean, I don't know how, much, how many more years Marty's going to be there, so... He's been the backbone of that organization for almost 20 years now, so I think it's um, I think it's still going to be solid. As long as you have Lou Lamorello there and you know Dave Conti running things, they're gonna they're gonna get the players, and they're, and they're always going to compete uh, in the playoffs, the first Stanley Cup. Marty was at a <clears throat> a luncheon, and not in his order, but as he does so often, and all you guys do, 
to help raise uh, money for a charity. And Johnny Bauer was at the head table with him. And he said, Johnny looked at him and said, and Marty said to him, they're talking about play. And Marty said, you know what, I'm 43, still got to go through the grind. And I don't know, I'm getting a bit long in the tooth for that. And Johnny looked at him and his face lit up like only Johnny's did and said, that's when I broke into the league. <laughs> that's hilarious. Isn't it? Marty's a great athlete. He, he, can, I mean, he can keep going as long as he wants, just depending on how long he wants to deal with the grind and all that stuff is the biggest question. Well, Johnny Bauer is still one of the most popular guys here. He's, like, he still gets a thousand letters every month that he tries to answer. I mean, it's amazing uh, that he has. And, you know, Jay, you're going to be respected in the same sort of breath uh, for the rest of your time out of the game. Tell me this before I let you go. I know that it's just happened, but obviously you've sat down with your wife and, and family and considered what you're going to do in the future. You know, it's a big turnaround. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know, I mean, Jay and all the rest of these guys have got great wives at home who raise the family when, when the, the husbands are on the road playing and they take care of all the little de ins and outs. And sometimes when Hubby gets comes home, he gets in the way. I mean, you know, you might find that, Jay. Uh, there's no question I'm getting in the way. I realize <laughs> that right away. <laughs> so, I mean, you, uh, you know, in the back of your mind, I know you're going to enjoy a little time with the family and, and getting your thing done, but uh, are you a guy who sees himself getting into coaching, broadcasting? Uh, uh, just uh, what, what do you see for the rest of your life? Because you've got the most of your life ahead of you now. Yeah, um, I think I'm definitely going to be involved in hockey in some aspect. Not positive which way I'm going to go with that yet. Um, still trying to take some time and think about it. But I do, I do enjoy the coaching aspect of it. But kind of just going to take my time and kind of see what opportunities come up. And um, but there's no question I definitely want to stay involved in hockey. It's something I've done my whole life and really enjoy it. All right. Well, you'll be a great addition wherever you are. And uh, I wanted to ask you this: This is the question everyone's got as you leave us now. Big game there. Uh, are you going to the game, by the way, in New Jersey? Are you going to the Super Bowl? I'm not going to the Super Bowl. I'm okay. going to miss that one. So. Oh, okay. So, I mean, we're asking everybody the question. I'm not going to tell you which way everyone's been leaning, but everyone so far this morning, all of my guests have been leaning one way. I want you to tell me who you pick and give me one reason why. I take Denver. I just think Peyton Manning's going to you know, find a way to get a sec second Super Bowl. I don't want to bet against that guy. You're the first guy to pick him this morning. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully I'm right. Yeah, I kind of, I like, I respect Peyton, and I'd like to see him get one more. I don't think anyone can make a definitive answer one way or another, but I agree with your sentiment there. Jay, enjoy your retirement as much as we enjoyed watching you play uh, over all these years. It's been a privilege to have you on on my show this morning. Thanks for taking time to do it, and thanks to Andrew Wolf and Jay Weatherton and all my buddies at the NHLPA for helping set this up. Thanks a lot. Appreciate all right, take care, Jay. See you later, Brian. Thanks.